All right, and the weather is going to be pretty nice greeting them when that school bell rings. Let's go to meteorologist Tamara Burke. Yeah, keeping it very comfortable out there right now. We have 50s and 60s. If you haven't stepped out the door yet, top of the six o'clock hour at 59 right now in Fairfield with that steady Delta breeze. We're at 63 currently in Yuba City, 61 heading out in Stockton and Sacramento, 63 right now in Modesto. And good morning, Placerville waking up to temperatures that are in the upper 60s. I know that's a school district district of well that is going back to the classroom. How strong as that Delta breeze. Well, you're going to feel it the moment you step outside in Solano County. Winds are up to 18 miles per hour. South wind steady at five in Sacramento up to five here in Stockton and winds are out of the uh, east playing out at just under 10 miles an hour for Auburn. Today will be a beautiful summer day across town expecting temperatures in the upper 60s around 10 o'clock this morning moving up to 80 degrees in the Valley Planner by noontime. We'll hit the mid 80s as the kids are leaving the classrooms later on today to three o'clock in the afternoon and then look at eight o'clock. We drop off nicely into the upper 70s as the sun starts to go down. I know in Elk Grove it is back to school, so comfortable kickoff to your morning for the kids. They may want to layer as they head out the door by mid morning, looking at temperatures mid to upper 70s and for the pickup time again, three o'clock in the afternoon. We're looking at highs in the upper 80s. So again, another beautiful day, but Things are going to start to warm up, especially later on in the weekend. I'll mourn your full forecast coming up in a bit. It's 6.02 right now. Brian, how do the roadways look? Well, there's a look at northbound I-5 at Richards Boulevard. The uh, camera shot froze, but you get an idea of how heavy the traffic is in this area. A short time ago, they had traffic at a complete standstill due to a couple hundred cardboard boxes that were scattered across the lane. CHP officers stopped traffic, got the debris out of the roadway. And uh, so traffic is moving in, but you can see the backup from Highway 50 all the way up north through the American River, where this was all reported right just north of Richards Boulevard. So again, very slow traffic through the downtown area. Also starting to impact the WX freeway a little bit there for folks trying to get to I-5. This is a look at I-5 coming from Elk Grove. No delays there. 99 no delays uh, coming out of Elk Grove. And as we check in on the 50 and 80 corridor, 50 coming into downtown, no incidents to report. And then uh, I-80 also looking good. We have a minor incident on Fulton Avenue. They're waiting for a tow truck. That's the icon you see there. Stockton, no incidents on the freeways. 599 Highway 4 looking good off to the west. And if you're coming up through the 99 corridor, 13 minute ride out of Modesto. 205 is a 29 minute ride across the top of the triangle. Most of that slowing right here. And then westbound 580, 28 minutes over the Altamont Pass. Interstate 80, 505 to 12 will take you about 14 minutes. Here in Sacramento, Highway 50, a 10 minute ride. Interstate 89 minutes out of Roseville, 5 and 99, looking at 12 minutes coming up from Elk Grove. Back to you. All right, thank you, Brian. We have new information overnight in those devastating wildfires in Hawaii. This morning, officials confirm at least 36 people died as those flames tore through the community of Lahaina. So let's go ahead and bring in Mike Cherry now with the very latest on this developing story. Yeah, so that information was posted on the Maui County website last night. Also mentions that dozens more injured, some critically, but the fires are still burning so crews still have not had time to go through all of that destroyed homes and businesses in that historic town. Firefighters are taking advantage of calmer winds right now to try and stop the flames across western Maui. Offic officials say at least 271 structures have been damaged or destroyed. Meanwhile, thousands of residents and tourists are spending the night in emergency shelters or even in their cars because they've got nowhere else to go. You know, we are uh, so heartbroken and we are just so deeply um, saddened by the tragedy on Maui, um, especially for individuals um, who lost family members, friends. Um, uh, they continue to have uh, assessments and um, they are continuing to do search and rescue. Um, this is a really tragic moment for not just the Maui County, not just for um, the people of Maui, but it's for the entire state. And airlines are helping getting people out. Last night, first planes arriving from Maui landed at Sacramento International Airport. Many of the passengers were told to evacuate the island in the middle of the night. One man tells us that he helped build commercial structures in Lahaina and says all of them are burned to the ground. It's tragic. I mean, the Pioneer Inn, the oldest hotel there in Lahaina, will never be rebuilt. I mean, it's never going to be the same as it was. So it's, it's pretty tragic for Hawaii. Monday, our power went out, and then Tuesday, we woke up to seeing, like, just smoke and fire everywhere. Um, we thought it was contained, but then it must have jumped the highway and it got really close. About midnight last night, they told us, hey, be ready to evacuate. About 3 a.m., we got evacuated. 
Now, the Hawaiian Department of Defense did work through the evening to restore communications, distribute water, and bring in more law enforcement as well. And one of the big attention grabbers yesterday was the news that people were jumping into the ocean just to escape yeah. the fire. Coast Guard says that it pulled 14 people out of the water, including two children. And, you know, I, I know we didn't show that video, but it's circulating all across social media. If you see some of those videos out there, there are people literally driving through just walls of flames. Mm -hmm. um, and some of their vehicles just stalled out or wow, they were trapped hot. and they had no idea where you to go. You get disoriented, yeah, too, yeah. because 100%. you're surrounded by smoke and flames and we've yep. seen that here in horrible wildfires right. in California. I had a question. Um, yeah. You may not know, but Mike Cherry, you, you grew up in on the island yep. of Maui. You spent most of your life there. <laughs> yeah, fact. yeah. You used to work for a news station there, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I was wondering is what is their wildfire department or do they have like a cal fire like we have here no there isn't a, a cal fire um a lot of the fire stations are very well trained they actually get trained by a lot of folks in california to fight wildfires and you know a lot of folks will think well i can't believe there are wildfires in hawaii but there are dry aspects sure. of every island the entire island chain um, has a wet side and a dry side and the west side of Maui as well as the south shores those tend to look like if you went there during this time if you've never been to hawaii mm -hmm. if you went there during this time you'd see the grass, the same color as the grass that we see in a lot of parts around here. Right. It's just gonna be not discolored. And you know, you may never have thought about that. Yeah, yeah. Your mom's on the other side of the island and yes. what is life like there right now? You know, I mean, we were just talking about that a little bit ago. Uh, th for the most part, a lot of folks are, are just kind of going about their day to day. Um, not that they're not thinking about what happened, but relatively unaffected because this is about a 50 square mile island so even in a place like Lahaina even though it's it feels like it's a stone's throw away th there's some distance as well right. so um, some folks are going about their daily business but a lot of that now is going to be including trying to get in touch with family members mm -hmm. and sure. friends and organizing drives right. well, it's good to know your family's okay yeah thank, thank you. you all right thank you Mike it is 6.07 right now. Hawaii native President Barack Obama tweeted about the fires last night, saying it is tough to see some of the images coming out of Hawaii, a place that's so special to so many of us. Michelle and I are thinking of everyone who has lost a loved one or whose life has been turned upside down. He included a link to donate to the Hawaii Community Foundation. We will continue following this today as we learn more about the victims and the communities who have been devastated. And over on My58 at 7.30, we'll talk to a Red Cross volunteer heading to Maui this morning and for the very latest on the Maui wildfire don't forget to check out our KCRA mobile app. Well this morning firefighters in Oakland are still at the scene of a fire burning just outside of the port of Oakland. Take a look here. Huge plume of smoke first reported around 620 at Schnitzer Steel. A fire said to be contained to a single pile but this morning that pile is still burning. City of Alameda's fire boat was called in to help out and they did get it under control around nine last night but they are having to let some of it just burn off. The cause of the fire has yet to be determined. And we also have an update on an investigation into the Oak Ridge High School football program, oh, something that happened at football camp now. The El Dorado County Sheriff's Office says it was looking into criminal allegations that happened during the camp, but investigators are not saying what those allegations are specifically. The Sheriff's Office says because the incident happened outside its jurisdiction, it turned the investigation over to the Douglas County Sheriff's Office in Nevada. We reached out to that agency. We have yet to hear back. And in Elk Grove, police there have arrested a man and his mother on numerous charges after a rather bizarre incident. Happened Friday afternoon. Police say Zhu Lu and his mother Yu Wang attacked his girlfriend, strangling her, beating her, and threatening to shoot her if she told police. She was able to call 911. When police got there, they found more than $135,000 in cash, as well as drugs and guns in that home. Well, happening today, a Sacramento homeowner says he will be meeting with the city's building division to discuss finally repairing his home seven months after that tree crushed it. Ever since, he's been stuck with a lot of red tape. So here's a look now at that tree on top of the home. This was in January. Fast forward to now, the roof is still broken and it's covered in blue tarp. Now, the homeowner put up a banner to send a message to the city of Sacramento. The initial rebuilding application that he submitted in May was denied because of unpermitted work on the basement, which was actually done before he bought the house. All I'm trying to do is build it the exact same way it was on January 7th. You know, just put it exactly back to the same way it was before. 
So his home is part of the Capitol Mansion's historic district and for historic properties, the city says if the applicant proposes repairs that are incompatible with the original building, the process can be challenging. The city works with applicants to ensure a permit. A structure is kept to its historical features as much as possible. Well, today, thousands more students head back to class. About 20 area districts start the new school year, including the largest district in Northern California, Elk Grove Unified. And that district does serve all of Elk Grove, plus parts of South Sacramento and even Rancho Cordova. KCR 3's Aaron Heff live at Pleasant Grove Elementary with more on this exciting day. Yep, live at Pleasant Grove Elementary School, one of the district's 68, yeah, 68 in total schools served by the district. They're back in session today, so parents and guardians loading those kiddos up both in the car and on the bus. Over 63,000 students will be back in desks today in Elk Grove. As the fifth largest district in the entire state of California, Elk Grove Unified covers 320 square miles with their 68 schools, serviced by over 65 500 staff recognized as a quote top performing district in California. Last year they bolstered a 92% graduation rate, which is about 10% higher than the state's yearly average. And in the next 30 minutes, we'll be speaking with the principal here at Pleasant Grove Elementary School, Deidre Wood, to get an inside look as to what goals they have for those students this year. Back out here live though on campus, K through 12 for the entire district while they're back in desks for their 2023 20 2024 school year in Elk Grove, Aaron Heft, KCRA 3 News. All right, Aaron, thank you. Well, some other big districts opening today include Natomas Unified, San Juan Unified, Roseville City School District, Roseville Joint Union High School District, along with schools in Patterson, Houston, Ceres, Placerville, Pollock Pines, and a number of other smaller districts.